Hey, Ronnie here. Welcome to Modified episode number 11, where we share with you vehicles that have been accessorized and customized for everyday use and four wheel driving. Subscribers, welcome back. First time viewers, hello, I'm Ronnie from fourwheelinginwesternaustralia.com, the four wheel drive and camping information website, pretty much covering everything in regards to those two things. All right, let's get into the vehicle behind me. Rightio, folks, so here we are. I'll introduce you to the owner of this vehicle. A lot of you, a lot of our subscribers will know who it is. He's usually the man behind the camera. How you going, Brian? Yeah, how are you, Ronnie? Or Dad? How are you? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> right, so how does it feel being on this side of the camera and not the other side? Yeah, that's a bit different, though. Eh? Yeah? You <laughs> feeling all right? Not too yeah, nervous? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm right. All yeah. right. <laughs> so you want to tell our audience what you got here? Yeah, we got a 2007. Jeep Wrangler, unlimited, 3.8 litre petrol, automatic. Radio. What's it set up for? Uh, mainly touring and uh, medium to hard tracks. Also. As we always do, we'll cover the vehicle from front to back, starting with the bar work, ending up in the interior. So let's get into it, eh? Bar work. What have we got in the front? Well, in the front here, we've got a TJM wind spar with a 12,000 pound XTM winch on. XTM winch? Yeah. It's held up pretty good, that winch. From yeah, I haven't had any trouble with it at all. And I like what you got here with the, the flap thing here. Yeah, that's pretty handy. Sort of hidden out of the way too. Not only that, like for, just for the water crossings, because my plate's nearly, oh, yeah. it's about to get yeah, torn that's, off. That's it just comes up, yeah. Has your plate been almost ripped off yet? No, it hasn't. No, but it's uh, quite often when I come out of the water, it's sitting up here. And you've got the Dyneema rope on your winch. Yes. Covery points, but um, it might look like these are on the bull bar, but they're actually on the chassis, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. They so, go straight through the hole here. Yeah. And your rock sliders? Yeah, they're made by uh, Blackjack Welding. Blackjack it's, Welding? Yeah. Okay. It's sort of a, a side step and rock sliders. Well, they seem pretty solid. Uh, they are pretty solid. They have saved me a couple of times. Your rear bar, is that something you can do later? Because you still get your stock bumper and then it does look like it's coming apart a little bit. Yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, that's something I'm looking into getting a, a steel bar on in the back. Anything particular you're looking at? Or? No, I haven't really made up my mind yet. But so yeah, what? The roof rack is a unique 4x4 and um, it's uh, steel and uh, aluminium. Steel and alloy? Yeah. Uh, what part so of it's steel then? Well, the bars here in the front and the back are steel, and uh, the bottom here on the top is aluminium. Oh, I can see what's bolted together there. Uh, yeah, okay. So the frame is steel. And you can actually undo it here and swing it around if you want a soft top on or, or whatever. So you swing the top off, but you leave the... You leave the uh, you yeah, uh, you leave the bracket on here and leave the bracket on, and then and the, and the rear bracket obviously as well. Or? Oh, it, yeah, yeah, that's left on the whole rear bracket will just. Oh, okay, on. so just okay, so this just comes off. Uh, Righto. And you can take the front panels off here too if you want. Oh, because they're just bolted. Uh, yeah. Max tracks. Yeah. Been used a few times. I know that. That's cool. Warning. What warning is that? Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's an Austral awning. Austral awning, yeah. okay. And it, that's the one that you got a tent for that, yeah? Yeah, I got a, a tent. Did it come with tent. the tent or? Oh, you buy them separate, yeah. Oh, but it zips onto it, so it is a proper tent for this oh, awning. Oh, it's made for this awning, yeah. Yeah, righto. Yeah, that's pretty handy actually. And, um, yeah, that's. Mainly for fuel or water or whatever you want to carry up there. Was it hold 220s? Yes. 220 litre? Yes. On to lights and comms. Let's start with your comms. So this aerial is for UHF, yeah? That's UHF and the same as the one I got up the top. I got two uh, UHF right just in. Okay. What DB is this one? Uh, that's a 4.5. And the top one is a uh, three. It's a three, yeah. But uh, the top one works as good as this one because it's sitting up higher. So yeah, I find the same. Yeah. And the funny thing is, a lot of people say you only get two to three kilometers out of that. Oh but no, we've been getting like 17 15, kilometers, 15, 20 kilometers on flat terrain, of course. 
Oh, well, let's move on to your lights. We've got a couple of spotties here. I mainly use on the highway and that, in the dark. Uh, I have upgraded the light here to um, LED lights. Do you find them better than before? The other one was like candle lights, you know. <laughs> uh, they're heaps better. <laughs> yeah, candle lights, yeah. Uh, and they are approved. They look pretty cool too. Uh, they got parking light and everything. And, and you're about to say they're waterproof something, yeah? Yeah, they're waterproof too. Okay. So I had trouble with you. That was why I changed them, the main reason, because I got water in the other one. So. Yeah, well, that's because you don't go for the bow wave. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> light bar on the top. And I got the cover yeah, off, that's eh? a 26 inch light bar I got up there. Got a cover plate on. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool website, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, you got lights on the rear too, yeah? Yes, I got some work lights on the rear and reverse light, whatever. They're not hooked up to reverse. I got a, a switch on them, on okay. each, each lamp. Tires and lift. We'll start with your tires. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Federal motoring tires, uh, 33 inch. I have done about between 30 and 40,000 on, on them, I'm not quite sure. Already? Yeah. Yeah, they are uh, pretty good. They are a little bit more noisy than uh, the old trying tires, but uh, they're excellent on road and off road. Okay. I've been quite happy with them. And you still kept your factory rims? Yeah, eventually I'll probably go steel, but um, I haven't had any problems with them. So, so let's move on to your suspension. Well, I got a two-inch Terraflex lift kit on. So, um, just two-inch Terraflex? Yeah, I want to keep it. Uh, it. It's my daily ride, you know, so I don't want to push my chances getting a yellow stick on or whatever, so that's... A lot of our videos, we get asked by um, viewers why you don't have um, sway bar disconnects, because they're pretty common on these vehicles in the US. Yeah, there's a lot they use them here too, but um, I haven't really had any issues. It's uh, quite, uh, I got quite yeah. a lot of flex anyway, so I haven't really got but, too much into it. But from memory, he's actually got auto disconnects because you've lost uh, a few. Yeah, I have had a bit of trouble <laughs> with them a while back. They kept on falling off. That's why I got so, so good flex. But that's Such all flex. That's all sorted out now. Okay. Well, I hate to admit it, with a two inch lift, he's got more flex than my cruiser. So there you go. I'm probably the one that needs disconnects. Radio to the engine. One thing you do like about Jeep is how you open the engine up. It's like a race car. It's not that fast though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Now, I know this vehicle well, so I'm not going to pretend I'm looking for a battery. I know your second battery is in the back. Ah, uh, we got an extra battery in the back. Yeah. What's the reason for the battery in the back? Is it because you can't fit it here or? The main reason is the magnets get too hot under the hood, so that's why I put it in the back. Well, that's a good point too. Okay, well, I reckon you struggle for room anyway. Yeah, uh, I probably would. Uh, there's not much change in here, but what, what no, is there? We got the uh, uh, diff breeders extended there sitting up here. Oh, okay, you got four breeders there. It's both diffs, gearbox and transfer case, I take uh, it. Yeah, that's correct. Righto. And uh, then we got an extra transmission cooler put in here because... Oh, that's right. Yep. Uh, every time we put it on the computer, it uh, showed up with um, hot transmission. Um, overheating uh, transmission. Over overheating transmission. So okay. I haven't had any issues since I put that one on. All right. Didn't we, we had a shutdown on one of the tracks and uh, we had an engine light. We did. Light, we had a it? whole dashboard lighted up and flashed at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so, that's a good addition, that one. Uh, with your fan, because we had a drama in the previous video. Uh, um, Are you going to change any the fan at all? Well, or? I have tried to uh, look into if there is an upgrade that would be better, because it doesn't really like the fine mud, you know. Mm. When it's running in the mud, it uh, sort of sees and it's not running anymore. I have been able to wash it out with high pressure water, and so okay. that has worked. I still reckon I, um plate underneath your engine. Oh, it, that would probably help. Yeah. yeah. Righto. Um, so the reason for the fan thing is because it's built like a European car, not built for Australian climate. 
So it's an electrical fan, uh, correct? Uh, yeah. Whereas most of the Toyotas and Nissans and stuff, they actually run the blades, the fan off the engine block. This one isn't. So a lot of European cars aren't. Any other plans for the engine bay? No, not really at this moment. Snorkel? Is that a Jeep snorkel? Yes. Yeah, so, it's, so it's by Jeep? Yeah. Okay. Exhaust, I know you changed the exhaust. Because before it sounded like a Prius. Yeah, but that's uh, <laughs> because I put a box in the back for the battery and that, so they had to change the exhaust. Oh, it's just a muffler or the exhaust? Uh, it's just a muffler. Just a muffler? Um, okay. All right, well, I think that's the engine bay covered. You're still running a standard paper filter in the yes, air, air box? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, let's uh, open it up, eh? Okay, talk us through what you got there. Well, I've been working a little bit uh, on the drawers. I couldn't really justify, you know, a couple of thousand dollars to put drawers in, so. Fair enough. This is still a work in process. Progress, uh, yep. uh, Progress. Uh, but it's working fine, you know, so. Uh, so that's so, a filing cabinet, yeah? Uh, that's an old filing cabinet I have just covered in carpet yep. and put in there. It might sound a bit funny, but it's actually pretty handy. Yeah, just. So you don't have all these boxes and going to move one box to get into the next one and stuff yeah. like that. So what do you got here? What's in this one? That's all uh, recovery gear and stuff in this one here. Okay. The other one is tools and camping stuff and plates and stuff. Oh yeah, cooking stuff. Did you custom make this shelf just for that chair? Yes, I did. It <laughs> just fit in there. <laughs> then we got the extra battery down here and an air compressor underneath there as well. Fire extinguisher on each side. You must square that fire. Well, they said they are talking about Jeep is catching fire pretty easy, so I'm prepared. <laughs> Power board here. Yeah, I got a, a two outlets, uh, like cigarette plugs and the switch for the um, compressor. USB plug there as well. And uh, I got a, a oh. bench there behind you. Yep. Pretty handy for cooking and stuff. Oh, yeah, same you... guys as the roof rack. Yeah. yeah. Unique 4x4. Four four. We are now in the interior of the Jeep. Brian's going to run us through what he's got in here. So what do you want to start with? Let's go with that thing over there. Yeah, we got a race chip here. That's actually connected to the accelerator to uh, so I don't have the lag and the accelerator. It's got six different settings, economy and racing. Okay. So, so for when you pull out in the highway? Yeah, or off-road or whatever. You use it off-road, do you? Yeah, I usually uh, had a setting in the middle, sort of. For mainly for sand or it doesn't matter what no, it is? No, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just, you know, the 3.8 litre here is a little bit slack and coming up. You've got okay. to sort of push the accelerator right, right down. Right. But this one there takes that off. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, GPS's. Now, yeah. I know you got your street Tom Tom, so don't worry about that. But I got, got a mini iPad up here where I, where I can use Google Earth and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, I got a Hema here. Oh, it's a HN, HN5? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's you for a new one, I think. Yeah. Getting there. <laughs> Yeah, and then I got uh, two uh, UHF UHF radios. Okay. One, one down here, an ICOM, and I got a little one up here. Oh, the Oricom. Yes. Okay, so you you normally have one on channel forty on the road, yeah? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you hear the truckies yes. and either robots. that or on scan, you know, depending where we are, and stuff like that. Yeah. The only thing I found was scan though, if you got the other one on, you pick yourself uh, up when you talk. That's true. That's overhead console? Rocket Ritz overhead console for storage, like maps and the handheld stuff okay. like that. And we got some uh, grab handle handles. Here. Yep. Switches for the light down here. One for the spotties, one for the light bar, and uh, one for each of the rear light because one of them is uh, hooked up on the rear battery for camping and stuff. So and the other one's on the cranking battery then? Yeah, just so I don't okay. clamp them, you know, if I got the light on for an hour or so at night. 
Fridge in the back seats. Fridge in the back seats, yes. Is that mainly due to space in the back? Yeah, it is mainly due to space in the back. Yeah, well, lucky you got a four door, not a two door, right? Yeah, a uh, two door, no, I wouldn't go there for space, space wise. Yeah, no. more of a toy, you reckon? Yeah. And then I got a little handy lamp here. Yep. I mean, and it's already always charged, you know, so. Yeah, you got one of those, they're cool. Yeah. Q and A. Q and A it is. Questions and answers. We'll start with the first ones we normally do. So tell our audience what are the three main modifications you think someone should do to a stock standard Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited. Well, a stock standard even go uh, far away, but I would say. Uh, Steel bar in the front with a winch, a lift that will take you even further. And some mud tires if you want to go in the mud. Okay, so steel winch bar, lift, and mud tires. Yeah. So you have to pick one thing that you can't go without when you go four wheeling. What is it? Oh, that's recovery gear. Recovery gear? Yeah. Okay. I think the last. Nine people have said recovery gear, so it yeah. just tells you how important it is. So the people who do go four wheeling, recovery gear is the one. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a hard question. What is your best trip so far? That is a hard question. Um, I knew it would be. I would probably have to say um, Israelite Bay to Esperance. Israelite Bay to Esperance? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a nice trip, a long trip and a lot of sightseeing and driving on the beach and off the beach and yeah. Everything combined. Yes. So that's a standout one. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Merkinson. Merkinson, yeah. yeah. That was quite a nice trip too. It, it's more challenging. So, yeah. yeah, okay. So the top two then? Yeah. All right. What was your previous vehicle? <laughs> Yeah, that was a key uh, carnival. <laughs> <laughs> that was mainly because we had a lot of visitors from overseas that needed transport, you know. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Final question. What is the next mod, the future mod for your vehicle? I know you mentioned the uh, diff strengthening, but is that only for the inevitability of the death wobbles due to wear and tear or? No, uh, the steering arm and the steering and the and the Wrangler, you know, is sitting right in the front there, and I already got a... a I noticed it's bent, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's bent. So uh, I need to upgrade that to a heavy duty and uh, move the steering damper on top, because it's... Uh, yeah, just getting contacted. Uh, uh, I remember a few times I, I had to stop you from climbing something because it looked like it was going to smash or uh, something. Yeah. So that's the main weak point on the Jeep, you reckon? Yeah, that's what I reckon anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you got the rear bar as well. Yes. Okay. Hello folks, this was a requested video. We had a few requests, well quite a few actually, on doing a video on the JK Wrangler that is in most of the trip videos. So how do you feel being on the other side of the camera? Yeah, that's all right. Not too daunting? Oh, I can probably get used to it. Yeah? <laughs> Well, he's had plenty of time laughing at, uh, at me doing takes, sometimes 25 times. Well, that wraps the video up. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Give us a thumbs up if you like the Jeep. Leave a comment. And <laughs> he bought a Jeep. Yeah, See did. ya. <laughs>